Hello once again, I'm a most valued student. My name is Confident and welcome to the lesson on the electrolysis of sodium chloride. And I'll just encourage you to grab hold of the two lessons, which we looked at the decomposition of copper chloride under the electrolytic cell. It is very informative if you can grab hold of that. And previous lesson to that, it was the basics of the electrolytic cell. So if you haven't grabbed hold of them, these will assist you in understanding what I'm going to describe here as the electrolysis of concentrated sodium chloride. Now, when you're talking about sodium chloride, we are simply referring to NaCl. Some they refer to this uh, part as concentrated sodium chloride as brine. Another name is called brine. So also in this particular lesson, sometimes it's also referred to as the chloro alkali industry i'll explain that um later as we go on they call it the chloroalkali industry but the key part is the electrolysis of concentrated sodium chloride now to quickly uh label the cell remember we said this is the positive this is the negative the positive terminal is connected to the positive electrode negative terminal to the negative electrode and then we've also agreed that electrons are flowing from then uh, from the positive, this is, we'll explain of course, this is the flow of electrons and they are coming like this. Also, this is the flow of electrons, right? They are flowing from the positive to the negative and the negative electrode here, we say it, it is negative because it has got what? It is excess electrons and then because of excess electrons, it will attract positive right and then we call it the what we call this one the cathode but i'm going to explain further cathode because it attracts what it attracts cations and then this one is called the anode because it attracts the negative which is the n ions are attracted there are you with me and then what else did we say we say these two electrodes are called graphite and then why do we call them graphite they are called graphite electrodes and then why do we use actually why is graphite used number one it is inert meaning it is stable and it will not take part in the chemical reactions occurring in the cell so the advantage of it is that it is inert and will does not participate in the chemical reactions occurring in the cell okay that was just extra i don't want to bring it into these but now let us look then at what is inside here we are saying this solution the electrolyte here the electrolyte and the electrolyte here is the concentrated sodium chloride all right and then we say it from the electrolyte as one number two, you need to also remember what is called the electrolytic cell. Why is it called that? So it's an electrolytic cell because it what? It converts electrical energy, right? Energy into chemical energy. All right. So that is very important to know. Chemical energy. And also we say it number three, after the electrolyte, the electrolytic cell, we call this process electrolysis or electrolysis. What is electrolysis? It is a process that converts electrical energy into chemical energy. So it's still more like the same definitions, but still put it in a different way to say electrolysis is a process. The electrolytic cell is the actual cell that is converting, making these conversions and electrolyte it is a substance that conducts electricity and by conducting electricity it is then converting that electrical energy into chemical energy again was this necessary no it's not let me take it off but it's important for you as you are doing your studies because they usually ask those questions but now what is important here is our guy here the sodium chloride if i dissolve sodium chloride in water remember we said it's aqueous solution so if i say sodium chloride and then i dissolve it in water h2o 
what am I gonna have? I'm going to have sodium plus, which is aqueous, right? Plus Cl minus, which is aqueous. So I'm gonna have sodium ions and chloride ions. So guess what? This is what is going to be here. I will have sodium plus and I will have Cl minus. They, are, they will be full in this cell. It's not like it's only one. It's Cl, sodium, Cl, you see, sodium, it's all over the place. Cl, 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 sodium, sodium. So they are full, right? No. So I'm just doing one so that you can understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. So I'm just going to be left with a representation of this. So I've got sodium ions and chloride ions. You must also remember the positive ions, what we call them. The positive ions here, we call them the what? Positive, you see? It's cat, there is the positive, cat ions. And the negative, what we call them? The N ions. The N ions. All right, so that is that. Then we said that the way this cell is operating, the positive ions they are attracted to the what they are attracted to the negative terminal and the negative ions are attracted to the positive terminal please remember so now the negative um, electrode uh, the negative goes to the positive the positive goes to the negative now we say at the positive here where i mean at the negative we say it in the negative here, there is excess electrons, right? And then in here, reduction occurs. All right. And then we call it what? We call it the rig. Remember, there is oil rig. Reduction is gain. So there is excess electrons. And then in here, you expect reduction, which is gain of electrons. On the other side, we are saying there is lack of electrons. And then oxidation occurs. And then comes back to what? To oil. Oxidation is loss of electrons. And then what is happening? Electrons are, as you can see, the flow of electrons. Electrons are being lost from the positive terminal and they are gained in the negative terminal. This is the external circuit. In the inside the, 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 the electrolytic cell, the ions are moving like that. Now let's come to what we are talking about this electrolysis of sodium chloride the reduction potentials that is where everything is happening the reduction potential now on the reduction potentials we see that we've got two ions the first one is for sodium so let's identify sodium reduction potential so if i look at sodium let's go to the reduction potential of sodium and identify it so these are my reduction potentials. You see, standard reduction potentials. So I'm going to look for sodium, 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 sodium. You see, it's not there, but it's at the bottom, 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 bottom. You see, very bottom. But now I would like us to also look at this number. So when it's negative, it means it doesn't like gaining this electron. So if it's positive go up up you see it changes from negative to positive if you look at the first one which is uh what do you call this fluorine fluorine loves gaining electrons hence it is one of the most substances that is easily what reduced so when it's easily reduced what do we call it look at this they call it increasing oxidizing ability so this is an strong oxidizing agent because it is easily reduced meaning it easily gains electrons in other words it feeds on these electrons it loves them the affinity for electrons is the highest if you put it with any other substance it will fight for that electron and always win every time in gaining that particular electron because it is number one so you can mix it with the next one maybe cobalt Whenever there is a fight for the electron, it will always win that electron. That's what it simple means. So, fluorine loves the electrons. And as you go down, you see the positivity decreases, meaning the ability to gain the electrons is not as strong. But now, look at sodium. It's at the 
near the bottom and it means it doesn't love gaining the electron but still we will write it as is as a reduction potential though it doesn't like it it is sodium plus electron to sodium metal let's do that sodium ion okay let me maintain that so it was sodium ion plus electron what does it give us as a half reaction it gave us sodium now this will be solid and this makes sense because if you did an experiment long long time sodium is a very reactive uh, metal if you put it in water remember this thing is happening in water it reacts explosively you know it's an explosive reaction hence you will see why it doesn't like uh, gaining the electron in this case and becoming sodium because when it becomes a metal it reacts explosively so now there it is we have got sodium plus electron we kept sodium solid and then the other one that you expect is the chloride ions we've done them in the previous lesson the chloride ions are up 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 here there they are this is chlorine gas plus two electrons is two chloride minus and you can see it laughs in this case you see it loves gaining this um gaining this electron is positive so let's do that to say chlorine here chlorine plus which is a gas plus two electrons and then it became what cl2 i mean 2cl minus sorry are you with me so now these are the half reaction potentials and everything is happening here but now what i want to show you is look at this the chlorine in as much as it loves gaining the electron compared to sodium that is not going to happen because we don't have the chlorine gas inside this we didn't start with the chlorine gas what did we start with we started with chloride ions so we've got cl2 ions so you see it has to start from this end see because that's where we are starting and then also this one has to start from this end because we've got sodium ions now this brings us to the case to say if sodium ions are going to be attracted here will we see sodium forming around this the answer is no then it brings us further to the what? To what then happens? We go to the reduction potential, don't forget that, and you identify that this is happening in what? In water. So you go and look at one that involves water. There is one like this one. It's water, but the problem there is oxygen. So leave it out. And please don't make errors because there is one like, I've seen students that like this one. This is not water this is hydrogen peroxide please and then you go and look for the one that is water you see water is appearing here but you see when water is appearing here it's yeah that is it. it it is actually one but here you are getting oxygen and we're not that's not the one that gives us oxygen are you with me so that's the problem there okay you can have most of water and water but the one that you are going to look for whenever you're talking about the reduction potential of sodium chloride is this one all right whereby you have got water plus two electrons which is hydrogen plus two or h minus let me write that one to say we have got i must check it back plus two electrons and then it was hydrogen which is gas plus 2 oh minus but i need to verify this so it's 2 h2o yes plus two electrons is hydrogen gas plus 2 h2 minus so this is an equation or a reaction that is occurring but look at the two when we compare them to each other between that and that you can see that it is above sodium now remember we dissolved the sodium in this water so it is above sodium and it has been noted that instead of this reaction occurring the reaction that would be favored you see is that one because look at the affinity of an electron though it is negative 
it will prefer to gain that electron or sodium will say water I prefer that you gain the electron instead of me because my nature is I cannot gain that electron it's difficult for me I'm more negative than you are to gain an electron for me is very very hard you see that's why it's negative but it is much better for you so what is going to happen is water then will preferentially gain the electron because why it has a less negative compared to to, to to sodium meaning if you can ask answer in terms of the increasing reducing ability or increasing oxidizing ability you can actually say water preferred to be reduced more than what than sodium because of the electron potentials we call these the e theta values these electron potentials they tell us which one can be easily reduced and easily oxidized so water can be easily reduced in preference to sodium hence the reaction that is going to happen as we say it is that one so since that is the reaction that is going to happen we can then ignore this one for now and focus on these two reactions and if it is these two reactions we did say let's start with the first one we said here sodium was supposed to be the one going but sodium is not instead there is water that is going to be happening so here you come back to say there is h2o this h2o is the one that will go there and gain the two electrons remember this is dissolved in water so if it's like that you write now the reaction as if i'm writing it fully it's two h2o plus two electron then you have one arrow now to say i'll form hydrogen gas plus two o h minus all right then the one for chloride you see they've got chloride ions they are the ones which are going to the what to the anode to donate that negative they're gonna lose electrons so they're donating here so this reaction as we did previously is going this direction are you seeing that meaning you are starting with two chloride ions in the solution then it's going to lose electrons to become chlorine gas see that and then plus two electrons now this is then what is actually happening and you come to the overall reaction here to say overall reaction when you do with the overall reaction you are going to now look at it the electrons are on the opposite sides which is what we want they're gonna cancel so you're gonna have now water here see that plus 2cl minus it is going to give us hydrogen I think that plus let me write it like that plus chlorine and then plus 2 O H minus I wanted to have my guesses together but whatever you can say this plus this plus chlorine so I wanted these guesses together so what are you going to see what are you going to observe then you're going to observe this gas here this is a gas it's hydrogen gas this is a gas it's chlorine gas that's what we're going to observe so when you come back to this part you're going to see that here you have bubbles of gas are you me so these bubbles of gas what did you call them we said here it will be h2 hydrogen gas are you with me and then similarly here we are also going to observe bubbles of gas see that's why they say it's the manufacture of chlorine and hydrogen gas so this is bubbles of gas and we called it cl2 gas are you with me and then something was noticed is that or something that was noticed was once the gas is formed you also have these two oh minus ions then there is a side reaction that takes place 
Remember, we ignored the sodium ions. We said we're going to ignore this one. So these sodium ions are going to be left roaming around there. So it will be the sodium ions plus this 2 OH minus. So I need to balance and put it to there. Then you will get 2 sodium hydroxide. Then this sodium hydroxide, what is it? We call it what? Sodium hydroxide. This is caustic. Sometimes they call it caustic soda. This is the base. It's a base. It's a strong base. This is the one that they use now in many chemical processes. One, the, one of them is the manufacture of what? Manufacture of soap. The soap industry. They use this one a lot. The manufacture of soap. It is used in um, in many electrical electro uh, chemical reactions, you know, in acid base reactions, acid base titrations, you know. When you're talking about this, you use it in lots of things. Sodium hydroxide. Are you with me? Hence, they call it the chloroalkaline industry. Alkaline is that part where they say it. remember we said it is the chloro meaning the manufacture of chlorine alkaline is the alkaline part of that so what are you going to observe you're going to observe bubbles on both electrodes one of them will be chlorine the other one will be hydrogen and in here it is more like you know like soap when you try to touch that liquid it will become more your hands will be slippery not really slimy but your hands will start feeling slippery it was sodium chloride at first, but after some time you feel your hands being slippery. It's like you're holding soap. You know, it is caustic you know, in nature. Caustic meaning it can strip all the fat from your skin because it cleans. You know, so that is what we mean by the word electrolysis of brine, concentrated sodium chloride. And then they will always ask you such questions and then bring in different situations. But this is what I will want you to go through every time you are solving it. All right. Now, guys, we have come to the end of our lesson. I know in the previous part, we also said we'll also look at, uh, that's the next lesson where you look at the, uh, is it the electrolysis of, actually, it's the purification of copper. That's another one. Look at this. Purification of copper. okay of copper it uses that and what else i think it is the um, that is copper and pp chloride the electrolysis of lead chloride i think um electroplating oh i wanted to say actually it's electroplating because that's what it uses so in the next lessons just look out for these two lessons actually not this one Purification of copper and electroplating. These are going to also follow shortly. We have come to the end of our lesson. Thank you.